Thank you for that warm welcome, ladies, gentlemen. Um, this is my third time speaking before the Rotary. You may not remember the other two. They were a few years ago on different topics. But when they, Dennis approached me, I said, well, yeah, heck, you know, COVID's over, we thought. <clears throat> Might as well go ahead and schedule something. And this is my first speaking presentation to a large group that I've had since COVID began. So, you know, hopefully it goes well. Uh, how many of you remember when WSIE first went on the air? Couple, how many of you know what WSIE is? Okay, hopefully more than a couple. Well, the, the, the history behind WSIE goes back actually to the planning stages for the university in the 60s. It was decided by the Mass Communications Department, John Ryder, John Rignell, some of the folks that were mentioned before, um, actually who put together an idea of, well, if we're going to have a mass communications department, we should have the best radio and television communications available. So they so they went ahead and put an application into the Federal Communication Commission to begin a nonprofit educational station uh, with John Ryder's mainly help, got it through Washington, got it approved with one caveat. They might know what that caveat was. They might tell me why you can hear WSIE almost halfway or more to Mount Vernon, but sometimes can't hear them in St. Louis County. And when the station was being approved, there was another jazz station in St. Louis back in the 60s. And they objected to WSIE being a jazz station and having coverage in the St. Louis area. So they granted the license, but only if they had a unidirectional transmitter which focused the signal towards the Illinois side and not the Missouri side. Well, of course, that station's long gone, and we are now working to get a new transmitter. That's in process. There's some thing, wheels turning behind that. If anybody's got an extra two, three hundred thousand dollars, we'll you know be happy to take it. It's, it's tax deductible, you know, nonprofit. Uh, but when we get the new transmitter in, then it will beam omnidirectional and we'll have coverage out past St. Louis County as well as well into Illinois. So the station is definitely growing. Anybody remember what the original format was when we went on the air? And we went on, by the way, in 1969. First broadcast was September 4th. Anybody listening back then? Huh? <laughs> well, why weren't you listening? <laughs> uh, all right, well, that's a better reason. <laughs> that's a good excuse. But the original format when it went on the air was, was kind of you know typical radio back in the 60s. There was news, they had, had a news department, news broadcasters. They, they, they got the news off the, uh, the teletype. Anybody know what a teletype is? You know, it came in you know, all day long and they pull it off the AP, Associated Press teletype and, and format the news and then broadcast it. <clears throat> they had their own sports organization. So they had a sports crew. They broadcast over to a high school game, sports. They did SIU sports, soccer. Of course, SIU had a, you know, a world-renowned soccer team back in the 70s, went to the Olympics and, and won uh, the national championship several times. Uh, they also had music. It was more general music back then. Uh, and they had short segments, different you know, features, we'll call them, that were produced by students, written and produced by students. There was only one professional station manager on the team and everybody else were students going into mass communications to learn the craft. Who can tell me one of the uh, uh, renowned sportscasters who came out of WSIE? Anybody ever heard of Dwayne Stats? Broadcaster for one of the big league teams down in Florida. He is a graduate of, of SIU. Uh, whatever, uh, how about another one who went on to Washington to become a White House correspondent? originally from Granite, Peter Mayer. You ever listen to P Peter Mayer on NBC or CBS? He just retired like, two, three years ago, I guess. But, and I could go on, there's, there's, there are dozens of celebrities that went into media and became you know, pretty big things yeah, nationally. Uh, when did the format change? The original format you know, was, was as I just indicated, then they went to a lot of the Oh, we had symphonic music, we had all kinds of things over the years. And when Jason Church came on board, who's our now our general manager, uh, in 2018, uh, there was discussion and we kind of titled, you, know, you heard WSIE, we came up with The Sound, as it's patented now. 
So we're WSIE The Sound 887, and we adopted and expanded the jazz format to include blues, R&B, some popular music, and we went from a listenership of about 20,000 listeners per week back in 2018. We're now over 90,000 listeners per week. So I told Jason it's all because of our show, but you know, he doesn't believe me. So, and we do a show every Saturday morning, the Financial Cafe on 887, 9 to 10 a.m. And we talk about financial issues. We have a lot of fun doing it. If you've ever listened to uh, like business partner, John Graney and Chris Lesser, the Mass County Treasurer is part of our team now. And we just recorded a show this morning that will air this Saturday. But we get into all kinds of financial topics and insurance and a little bit of politics, but we, we get in trouble usually when we talk about that on the air. So we try and avoid that to a certain extent. Um, how is the station funded? Anybody know? Yeah, donations. Anybody know why? <laughs> the state quit paying for it. The state of Illinois decided it was not a primary uh, teaching function, I disagree with them strongly, but you know, they just wanted to keep the money. So they told the station about three years ago that, uh, you know, you've got two years to create your own pool of funding as a vehicle or you're off the air. And we did not want to see that. So we've all been working hard to, uh, to keep the, the station going. Uh, it is funded strictly by donations, uh, by grants, uh, by underwriting. And we call it underwriting, not sponsorship because Nonprofit stations can't have sponsors, but they can have underwriters who underwrite the shows. And you know, you, some of the names you know, you know, Goldenberg Heller here from town, uh, our, our company, Lexo Financial Group, of course, is a sponsor. Um, let's see, Carroll House Furniture is a sponsor. The, the Sheldon the, uh, Muni is a sponsor. So there are a lot of sponsors available or underwriters uh, as part of the program. And of course, we're always looking for more. So there's some information up here. If you want to find out a little bit more about it, there are spots available. Uh, did WSIE ever have a segment show on bowling? They did. With what? Actually, yeah, actually they were involved in it. But I, I, used to, I didn't host it, but I used to engineer that show when it was on the air. Uh, what about a show on ping pong? No, no, no ping pong. <laughs> I, I just thought I'd try, you know. <clears throat> so what celebration is, hopefully, this was planned for 2020, but then COVID hit. So what celebration uh, is gonna happen this year by the end of the year, we hope. Our 50th anniversary of WSIE. Should have happened last year, but had to postpone for obvious reason. It's gonna be at the Sheldon. We've already kind of solidified that towards the end of the year. We have some name talent. I mean, some people are coming over in person to perform. It's gonna be a dinner, dance, music, uh, night. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So keep your eye open. It's gonna be open to the public. Uh, it's a fundraiser, obviously. And, but it's gonna be a lot of fun, a lot of good jazz, a lot of good general music, a lot of people uh, coming that you may have, have known. And of course, I have, I have to say thanks to Chancellor Randy Pembroke. I really hate to see him retire. He's been one of the best things for us in the station uh, as a major supporter. But uh, I, I'm happy he's ready to retire and we go out on top and uh, just hope our next chancellor is, is as beneficial. Uh, yeah, underwriting support has uh, quadrupled in the last two years to the station. Has the station uh, ever moved? No. The studios are in exactly the same place that they were when I went there in 1970. So it's, it's interesting, when I walked back in, going on seven years ago, when we created the Financial Cafe, I walked back in the studio and there were only a couple of things that had changed. Anybody know what they might be? Well, we had new mics, yeah, and the chairs, hopefully. Everything we did back then was on tape, magnetic tape, quarters magnetic tape with, you know, reels that were 18 inches, uh, carts, you know, sometimes you know them as eight tracks. Well, we use cartridges or cart machines. They're gone. Uh, anybody ever heard of a record player? Don't use them anymore. In fact, uh, one of the funniest things, Steve Jankowski, my good friend, also a graduate, you know, newscaster, now retired. Uh, he was uh, in charge of WSA for a number of years. And he was taking a new crop of mass comm students through the station and introducing them and showing them around. And one of the boys kind of looked at him and said, What's that? Steve goes, you don't know it's a record player? 
He's never seen one. Well, let me get you a record, show, how, show you how it works. It's just lost technology, what can I say? <laughs> Uh, but WSIE is partnered with the Cranesburg Arts Foundation. Uh, they are broadcasting the open air concerts live from the Grand Dell. If you haven't been to any of those, they're a lot of fun. If you can't go, listen in. Uh, we are going to be sponsoring the music at the Intersection Festival, which is going to be September 10, 11, 12 uh, in uh, St. Louis. And we are also about to hire another underwriting sales position full-time position. We've never had an, a full-time underwriting salesperson to help us raise money, but uh, the budget worked out such that they're just about to hire one, and we're trying to steal her from the St. Louis market, so she knows radio inside and out, and hopefully will be a major boon to getting additional underwriters for funding, because if we can't keep it funded, the state will shut it down, and we really don't want to do that. You know, 50 years is too, too much time to give away. Um, yeah, there really are, you know, station manager, Jason Church, you have Stephanie is uh, part-time underwriting sales, and you have uh, Carlos, who's our engineer, uh, and those are the three professional positions that run the station. The rest of us are volunteers in, in different capacities, either writing, producing uh, the show as we do with the Financial Cafe, or Blues, or, you know, there's a variety of other shows on, so. Uh, questions? Anybody have a question about the station, what we're doing, where we're going? Well, well, we we can't have sponsors or advertisers. We can have underwriters. So if you listen to the station, you'll hear. You know, this segment was was underwritten by Lexo Financial Group. Uh, so yes, we are we are definitely would like to get your name out there. It's amazing the number of people that listen. I mean, sometimes when we're doing a show, you kind of go, "Anybody out there?" Oh, in fact, I did that once back in 1970. I was doing a Saturday Sunday show and. It was dead, no phone calls, no nothing. And I finally said, would somebody please call me? And they did. So I knew one person was listening anyway. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we do get calls, we do get uh, um, emails. We get a lot of feedback that way. And we'll answer questions if somebody has. Yeah, John. Larry, uh, is, uh, how is the station doing in university? They are a separate entity, but affiliated with, with SIU. Yeah, S I U E, and they're part of the the Department of Mass Communications, kind of oversees that organization. So, well, we have a lot of fun. If you want to come out sometime when we're recording, I'd be happy to take you in the studio. If you got something to talk about, we'll put you on the air, as long as it's financially related, so to speak. Um, but we bring attorneys in, we bring you know uh, tax people in, we bring other professionals in from different categories just to help educate. That's what we're about, is educating people. And we call it, you know, common sense financial advice is what we try and give. And a good cup of coffee because our main underwriter who has been with us for seven years is the chef shop. You know, Scott and Nancy and the folks uh, get, came on board with us seven years ago and they've been with us ever since. And Scott is a MassCom uh, graduate actually too. So he was out there a little after I was, but I guess he had a fine place in his heart for us. So. But, um, yeah, you can contact Jason, general manager uh, at SIU, or call Stephanie, get hold of me. I've got some brochures and some cards, and but it's just fun. There's a lot of good music. If you haven't listened to the new format with jazz, R&B, uh, no ads as such. You know, so sometimes sponsorships that are mentioned, you know, segment sponsored by, but uh, it's great music and it's all genres that, that are related in that area. So. Uh, and it's it's a great you know public service for the area to uh, support what what's going on and uh, broadcasting the baseball games, soccer games, et cetera, when they happen too. So, yes. It's also not just the radio; you also do streaming. It is streaming. Thank you. Yeah, if you go to wsie.edu, because uh, I have a listener in Florida that, that emails me every once in a while. But yeah, wsie.edu, there's a button you can get to. Uh, stream the show so it's on 24 uh, 7. but yeah pick it up you know our show's on saturday morning 9 to 10 but there's lots of good music and information on there and keep you up to date on the area and what's going on and we'd love to see you out there take you on a tour if you want so any other questions if not i'll wrap it up there <laughs> Thank you.
Well, thank you, Larry. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the presentation. We oh, you're welcome. It. On behalf of Home Nursery and the Tatasik family, I'd like to present you with the centerpiece. Awesome.